And, um, I used to advertise in, in the back pages of Melody Maker, so uh, four or five years of, of ads in the back um, when I could afford it. I don't want to plead poverty here, but you know, it was one and sixpence a word in old money. Um, and that's really what eventually got me the gig with Genesis. I mean, it was it was four or five years of rejections of either myself or other people, but I did meet a tremendous amount of aspiring musicians. Um, I made an album with a band called Quiet World, uh, Pi Studios, uh, so I had a little bit of recording experience. Uh, we didn't do any gigs. And then a year later, um, I got a call from Peter Gabriel. And I was living at home with parents and my brother John, who played flute and guitar. Um, uh, Peter Gabriel came and Tony Banks to the flat we had, Ebury Bridge, uh, Pimlico. And I sat down and played uh, three different styles of things to, to them. Um, one was a, a flute piece, uh, a sort of pastoral style. Uh, the other thing was completely atonal, completely wild, like like mad jazz. Um, and the third thing was blues. And I remember Pete famously saying, I think we can use the first style. I'm not sure about the other two. <laughs> so, um, but by the time we were doing uh, A Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, uh, there was a moment called The Waiting Room whereby it was completely atonal and we'd torn up the... Uh, the chord charts, and it was the idea of everyone making an abrasive noise, and um, and I'm very glad that the band did that as as an as an extreme. So that's you know they didn't have pop sensibility. That wasn't really rock. Uh, that was um, something that might have derived from perhaps the jazz people of of a certain era, Miles Miles Davis, Live Evil, all of that, and then of course in in classical music, you know, it it, it abandoned tonality. Um, so, squeaky gate, yes, blips and squelches, all of that, but 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 valid and 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 on one extreme. So, I always think music, in a way, if you've got something sweet uh, um, and tonal and uh, um, compassionate, even romantic—that's the word I'm looking for. Um, if it's twinned with something really abrasive and and um, uh, um, as I say, eternal. Eternal, atonal. I'm losing my my words here. Um, the idea of the contrast of things, I, I think, works really well in, in music. These collisions and and music that works like a kind of film for the ear rather than the eye. The idea of here's a scene and here's another scene and another scene, and in order to make these things right, you've got to get good atmospheres to to link them. The bridge passages have got to be really good. So that's something we we tried to do in in Genesis. We we thought that we could join any two pieces of music if the bridge passage was good enough and that could be anything, that could be atmosphere. It didn't always have to be something um, entirely, entirely musical. Um, it's sort of, I'm tempted now just to go straight into talk yeah. about um, uh, Supper's Ready. Supper's Ready, yeah. I mean, there mm. you go, yep. 22 minutes or whatever it is. Mm. Um, yep. Extraordinary range, you yeah. Know, and, uh, and uh, I think it's, what's fascinating what you're saying is this the kind of combination of the sweet and the clashing. Yes. You know the bombastic yeah. and the the tender. Mm. It's yes. It's all there in that. Mm. Yes, it, it uh, is. Well, it, yeah. I don't know if it's possible. But can you remember how that developed and how that was put together and what what experiences you had doing that? Uh, well, I remember we were rehearsing at. Um, in the basement of a stage school. So upstairs you had girls learning to tap dance and um, made quite a din, in fact. So we just, we just used to laugh at times. We just had, had to stop when upstairs it was going clumpity clump, to dum to dum to da 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 da, you know. So they were all dancing to tea for two upstairs at half speed. And, um, and downstairs we were in what I think had been designed as a, as a cafeteria, really. And um, we started putting this piece of music together. Um, it really started out on, on, on 12 strings and we were all con contributing bits to that. Um, and it just seemed to get longer and longer. You know, there was 
another bit that joined that sounded a little bit like something from the 60s and then it went into something else and and something else and we didn't really stop and, and by the end of it and by the time we'd recorded this thing I really thought the record company are going to pull the plug on us you know because it would be games up guys you know um, instead of which it became one of you know the the um, one of the icons really and um, one of those things that defined what we now call progressive rock but we weren't using that term at the time um, prog rock Yep, that's it. Here it is. It's the idea of, of something that keeps changing scene. That's how I how I view it. Um, you know, if I'm going to be honest, you know, as, as a guitarist, I'm just as attracted to classical and flamenco and, and, and blues and all these other things, and they should be able to inform um, the mainstream. So I think by the time we were doing something like um, Blood on the Rooftops, I was able to, to use some of that. It was a song but with a very long guitar introduction. I'm surprised they let me get away with it really but um, I'm glad they did. Um, uh, but it, yes I, I think I think songwriting could could be quite hard to to, to uh, uh, penetrate the, the team and so I think one of the first things I wrote with, with Genesis was with was with Phil you know the two of us the new boys went off into a corner and and wrote um, For Absent Friends a little tiny song which Phil sang for the first time. So um, we humbly presented our, our work to the, to the great team. And um, surprise, surprise, they went for it. But that must have been a, 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 more than kind of pleasurable. I was thinking that uh, uh, symbolically important. Like yes. Step, you know, you, you well, I, I think so. The, uh, the yeah. I think the others had more more confidence in in their songwriting ability than than, than I did. Um, but you know, by the time I'd done a solo album in in 1975, um, um, I realised that I could I could write just as much as as, as anybody else, and, and in in lots of different styles. So, um, uh, you know, that that was important. Suddenly, you know, that was the facility to be able to switch on the tap and 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 and, and keep it coming and not and not feel. That you needed approval from everybody, um, uh, you know, an idea was was a good idea, whether or not people were going to go for it as as a team or not, and you know, it it can become very political in a band. Was it in the early stages uh, a, a kind of battle of wills over, you know, how how was this album going to be worked? Who, you know, what, what which songs were going to be used, which themes, which you know. Um, well, I think Genesis was famous for discarding very good bits. I'm not just talking about my own stuff, but other things that you know, stuff that that Pete had, had written, for instance. Um, and it was amazing to me that we would put things on a, on, a, on a back burner, and I uh, it 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 troubled me. You know, um, uh, I would push for certain things, and 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 you realise that in order to get something done, sometimes you would have to be extremely bloody minded. And, and at times threaten, you know, um, because um, I think they'd, they'd grown up at school with this kind of cut and thrust thing. You know, I think in another era, they would have all been trained to um, lead a charge in the Crimea and, 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 the Crimea and not flinch. OK, <laughs> now, um, you know, they, they were raised to rule. There's, there's no doubt about it. That's that's how it is. So. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes it would turn into all-out war, um, but you know, I think in any negotiation you've got to be prepared to lose. That's the strongest possible position. So I thought, well, if I lose my job with this, then so be it. But uh, but I'm still proud of of um, selling England by the pound because it's got a lot of great guitar moments in it. It's the best for me. Um, I think some of the others were less happy about it because perhaps you know, they hadn't gotten their own way. Um, but I felt that it was a vital role for me at that time. More difficult with, with uh, Loud Lies Down, following very dense keyboard uh, patterns. Hard for anyone to get um, anything in there. Hard to get guitar lines that, that matched up. You know, what do I do? Join the keyboard or, 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 or um, double the bass? Um, I had to really rack my brains to, to come up with anything remotely 
relevant at that time beyond contributing songs. And in the uh, Selling England, the first and mm. fourth, first, first and fifth, yeah, um, first great fifth. stuff from you in, yeah. in that, which um, talking to Daryl, uh, yeah, he later played live yeah. when the band were playing in the eighties, yeah. but mm. you know, hats took his hat off to you for for the extraordinary kind of creativity that you put into that. Do you see that as very much a kind of signature track for you, for Firth of Fifth, that um, you put yeah, your, I th I think so. your um, mark on there? Well, it's it's a very lyrical melody. Um, and, um, yeah, it's... It, it's um, I'm, I'm really searching for the right words here because I don't want to sort of just be glib about it, but um, there is a style of music that Genesis became known for, and I think without Firth of Fifth, it would have been all the poorer for it. So you've got you've got classical sensibility, you've got something that's slightly Indian sounding, that's slightly Eastern. Uh, there's even an aspect of oh. Um, French Impressionism in, in there. I know it sounds pretentious to say all this, doesn't it? You know, a bit of Eric Satie, you know, it could have been one of the Nossi ends in terms of, of uh, you know, the type of, of melody originally uh, written on piano and, and doubled on flute. Um, but guitar is really what, what makes it take off that, that, that thing. So um, it was uh, really, really important for me being able to uh, be let loose on that and have a great long a guitar solo because you know the theme was was strong so you could move away from it you could tease people into it and then you know the idea of the band suddenly organ gets joined by a mellotron gets joined by a bass pedal and arpeggios and the second time the theme comes in it's gone um it's gone really big so it was orchestration i think as much as anything else um, arrangement that um I think it's it's probably the band at its most orchestral, uh, but it's still rock without being gauche. It's still relevant and probably the most famous solo I've been involved with in my time. 